The day is June 8th of 2019, and a player by the name of Tyrone18 is about to get his first main category world record in Super Mario Odyssey. Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah, brother. Chaos is that, boys. Chaos is that, boys. Oh my god. Wow. You may have heard him say, Chaos is dead. Well you see, before Tyrone got this world record, a player by the name of Chaos Springle had held the world record with a time of 59.35 and before that, he had been dominating the game. But from here on out, Tyrone would go on a rampage. <laughs> Now not everyone watching this video has a profound amount of knowledge on Odyssey's speedrunning scene, so let me catch you up to speed. These are the 6 main board categories in Odyssey. The one Tyrone just got world record in is any percent, which involves that you beat the entire game as fast as possible. While it is insanely difficult to get a world record in any of these categories, any percent is by far the most popular category the game has to offer, and it is simultaneously the most optimized category. I will talk about the other categories later on, but for now, I'm going to give a brief rundown of what the any percent run looked like during the time of Tyrone's first world record. This run starts upon selecting a new game, and it ends upon exiting the wire in Moon Kingdom, which means that you will be traversing through 14 kingdoms and collecting 124 moons. Mario's moveset is by far the most powerful tool when it comes to getting a solid time in this game, as there are all sorts of moves within his arsenal. You can jump, double jump, triple jump, spin jump, dive, side flip, back flip, you name it. But when it comes to purely crossing distance, rolling is usually the fastest option, which is done by holding the crouch button and shaking the controller. This list of moves alone already makes the speedrun jam packed with all sorts of tricks, but things get even more absurd when Cappy is added into the equation. Cappy is crucial to this run as he not only presents us with more movement options, but he is used to capture other objects and enemies. So with a deadly combination of both Mario and Cappy, players would find all sorts of ways to skip sections of the game, and they would even find a few glitches that could be used in the any percent run. The first glitch to appear is in Cascade Kingdom, and despite the time save from it being rather small, the concept behind the glitch is huge. After Tyrone opens this chest, he quickly turns around, does a backflip, throws Cappy, and tilts his analog stick up as he's collecting the moon. If this set of inputs is done correctly, then you are able to use the moon to clip out of bounds, creating for the coveted moon clip. While this specific moon clip only saves about a second, this one in Wooded Kingdom saves around 30 seconds considering that it leads you to moons that are much faster than the moon clipless route, and then there's another moon clip in Snow Kingdom, but this one only saves a second in any percent. Outside of those glitches, the only other notable one that was used in the any percent world record was this clip in the Seaside Kingdom. If you place the fish here, uncapture, and then recapture it, you are able to get clipped out of bounds. If it weren't for the properties of the Cheap Cheap, then this glitch would be completely useless for any percent, but since the Cheap Cheap's shake has a wide hitbox, you are actually able to collect this moon here by shaking while still staying out of bounds. From there, you are able to enter this sub area and collect another quick moon before warping to the Odyssey. Since these two moons are right next to each other, doing fish clip first try allows for players to save 7 seconds over the old route. Unsurprisingly, Tyrone pulled off all of the glitches I mentioned in his world record, but that wasn't because Tyrone was the only one doing these glitches, that was because these glitches were just one of the standards that needed to be met if you're going to have any chance at obtaining the world record. Not only were pulling off the glitches important, but the movement was especially important because at this point in time, the game had already been optimized to the point where big time losses would not slide. If we look at Tyrone's sum of best, aka what a perfect run for Tyrone would be, then we would see that this time lies at a 58-58. Considering that Tyrone had just gotten a 59-32, this means that he played within 34 seconds of what would be a perfect run for him over the course of an entire hour, which is insanely difficult to do because this means that the biggest mistakes he made in this run only amounted to a few seconds. While Tyrone was on top now, there were multiple top runners actively running the game, and among them was Chaos Springle, who had previously set 13 world records in any percent. The quest to beat Tyrone was on, and this quest lasted one singular day because Chaos beat Tyrone by a second the very next day. While Chaos 
was slower than Tyrone in certain sections of the run, he had something that made him such a dominant world record holder, and that was his consistency. While Tyrone played 34 seconds within his sob, Chaos played within 21 seconds of his sob. So despite their times only being within a second of each other, their playstyle was very different at the time, which created quite the rivalry. About a month later, Chaos would once again beat his world record with a time of 59.30. This record was once again good, but there was definitely time to save as he lost about 5 seconds in Night Metro alongside 7 in Wooded. Therefore, Chaos kept playing any percent and right beside him was Tyrone, who was also getting better at the game every single day. But just 2 days after Chaos got his 59.30, another player would shake things up. This is Mitch, and on July 10th of 2019, he not only achieved his first world record, but he had absolutely demolished it, as he had beaten Chaos by an entire 16 seconds. You may think that a drastic improvement like this calls for a new time save, but there was nothing new discovered. Mitch had purely saved 16 seconds over the world record as a result of going for almost every single risky movement strategy there was at the time. Consistency was important, but consistency is best matched with speed, and if anything was going to prove that, then it would definitely be Mitch's world record. While this run was absurd for its time, it made people realize that 58 could potentially be a reality sooner than later because after all, Mitch was only 15 seconds away. Tyrone and Chaos would continue to grind down their any percent times, with Tyrone getting a time of 59.24 just 6 days after Mitch set his record. Over the following months, Tyrone would continue to bring down both his sob alongside his PB, but nonetheless, Mitch was still on top. In fact, Tyrone and Mitch had both brought their sobs all the way down into the 58.2x range as a result of further refining their movement, alongside adding small strategies here and there. But alas, the 59.14 remained the world record. You may be wondering how the top players were able to continue shaving off seconds, and to that, I say there's no one answer to the question. But the best answer I could give is the community, as there are thousands of people actively playing the game at a high level alongside hundreds who are labbing it out, but it gets more detailed than that. A lot of games have something called a TAS, which is an acronym for Tool Assisted Speedrun. A TAS is created through the efforts of both a lot of people alongside software such as video game emulators that allow for people to create a theoretically perfect playthrough. But since TAS was and still is within early development for Odyssey, the fastest playthrough of Odyssey lies within the best theoretical time sheet, otherwise known as the BTT. Considering that the BTT chunks up the game into hundreds of individual segments and puts them all together, it usually lies 2-3 to three minutes ahead of what the world record is. So while Mitch had a world record time of 59.14, the BTT lied at a low 57 minute time as all these members from the community worked towards grinding down each segment to near perfection. Unsurprisingly, Mitch had the most BTT segments at the time, which can help to explain why he was able to shave off so much time from the world record without any new discoveries being found. Going into September of 2019, Mitch's world record still stood, but at the very least, both Mitch and Tyrone were starting to get on more world record pace runs, and on September 18th, Tyrone would get on a promising run. Going into the Luncheon Kingdom, Tyrone was not only on pace to beat Mitch's record, but he had a best possible time of 58.49, meaning that he could realistically get the first ever 58 if he played the rest of the run well. Unfortunately, the run was just too much pressure for Tyrone to handle, as he lost 13 seconds in Luncheon, but even after losing all that time, his best possible time was still a 59.02. Since Tyrone's nerves had mostly gone away, he was able to take back control of his run, and he would finish with a time of 59.09, meaning that Mitch's 59.14 had been finally dethroned. 58 was only 10 seconds away, and with this minute barrier in mind, Tyrone and Mitch continued grinding any percent attempts. Come September 29th, Tyrone would get on another world record pace run, but this time, he was not only 58 pace out of luncheon, but he was on 58 pace going into the final kingdom. In fact, Tyrone 
was on 58 pace all the way until the final section of the game, but Tragedy would once again strike as he would miss multiple shots on this last pillar, but nonetheless, he would still get a new world record with a time of 59.05. The very next day, Mitch would get on a 58 pace of his own, and if he was able to clutch out Moon, he would be the first ever person to get a 58, but instead of getting 58, Mitch too would get a 59.05, but at least he beat Tyrone by 0.1 seconds. While neither of them were satisfied with their 59.05s, what they did know is that they were both more than capable of getting 58, so the race continued on. On October 1st, Tyrone would once again get another run to Moon Kingdom, but this time, his best possible time was a 58-57, which meant that he would only have 2 seconds of wiggle room to get 58, but once again, Tyrone would just barely miss the 58, as he would close out the run with a time of 59.02. Mitch and Tyrone had the skills they needed to get 58, they just had to get over the mental hurdles of achieving the time. This could take days, weeks, or even months, but regardless of time, neither of them planned on giving up anytime soon. So the race raged on, and come October 12th, one of them would finally do it. An achievement such as this one would usually call for a break, but Tyrone knew that he could do better, especially since he had breached his mental barrier. While Mitch would get a 58 of his own, Tyrone had gotten a 58.47, with this small time loss in Bowser's being his biggest deficit. Tyrone was finally satisfied with his world record, and Mitch was happy to finally get 58, so they would both lay off the any percent grind, and for the rest of 2019, Tyrone would remain on top. 2020 would commence, and Tyrone's record had now lasted for more than 100 days, which is something that no one else up to this point had done yet. This record was starting to last for too long, and all the top players of the game knew that they would once again have to refine any percent so that they could once again push the limits of what was possible. The 5847 was once again a legendary run, just like the 5914, but as I've stated before, there is still plenty of room for small optimizations, especially within the bigger kingdoms. However, there is one thing that I haven't mentioned yet. Just two weeks after Tyrone got his world record, a trick would accidentally be discovered in the Cascade Kingdom. After collecting the first moon, you are able to do a triple jump off of this block, and if you get both the wall jump alongside this dive right, you are able to just barely land on the slither of ground which allows for you to make it up here. This trick was a huge time saver, because beforehand, players would go through this cutscene, capture the dinosaur, and use a trampoline to make it all the way up to this boss fight. Essentially instead of doing dino skip, the top runners of the game would now be skipping dino skip and so the trick was fittingly coined the name dino skip skip, otherwise known as DSS. Unlike most strats up to this point, it took quite a long time for players to get consistent at DSS given how precise the damn trick was, but nonetheless there were upsides to it. The first upside would be the fact that getting the trick on the first try would save 10 seconds and even if you got it second try, you would still be able to save a few seconds. The other upside is the fact that this trick is very early on in the run, meaning that there isn't much punishment for resetting the DSS. Tyrone's record would stand for an entire 124 days, but eventually, a 125th day would come and Mitch would come back with a vengeance. Within a span of two days, Mitch would get a 58.44, a 58.42, and a 58.39. All of these runs were very good, but since the standards for a great run had risen once again, the grind would continue. Just 12 days Days after Mitch's 58.39, Tyrone would reclaim his number one spot with a time of 58.36, and in the following March, both Mitch and Tyrone would get their hands on the world record. They would continue to trade world records, and by May 24th of 2020, Tyrone had achieved the time of 58.11. Super Mario Odyssey Any% was now only 12 seconds away from once again breaking another minute barrier. While 12 seconds isn't much, it would be extremely hard to see 
say this amount of time over Tyrone's world record, especially considering the fact that a perfect run for him at the time was a 57.41. This meant that if a 57 was going to be achieved, someone would have to play within 18 seconds of Tyrone's sob, which means that you could really only have wiggle room to lose about a second in each stage. Tyrone and Mitch could have very well kept on grinding runs, but instead, they would focus more of their attention on bringing down their sobs. Remember how earlier on in the video I brought up the BTT? Well, when it came to Luncheon Kingdom, the BTT actually followed a completely different route than what runners at the time used. Not only did the BTT skip the spirit boss fight, but it included this absurdly hard trick to get into the sub area. While it was extremely difficult to save time using this route, everything within the route was definitely viable for runs, but the only thing that remained in the way of it being added was the trick I mentioned earlier. But since 57 was so damn close, community members would once again start labbing out parts of the run, and an alternative spiritless route would be discovered. At first, the top runners struggled to even save time with this route, but as they did more runs of luncheon with the spiritless route, they would come to realize that they were working with about 6 seconds of time save, which is huge because with optimizations to other kingdoms, alongside the inclusion of this route, Mitch and Tyrone would be capable of just barely squeezing out a 57. Except this time, the race for 57 was short-lived. <laughs> Mitch had not only gotten the first 57, but he had once again obliterated the world record. When I say that no one saw this coming, I mean that absolutely no one saw this coming, especially after how the race for 58 looked. Not even Tyrone or Mitch himself could have seen this coming, because usually, these minute barriers are quite the hurdles to jump over, but Mitch had gotten his first 57 pace to endgame, and he clutched it out despite having high nerves. Since Mitch popped off so incredibly hard, he was done with the game for now, but Tyrone still had unfinished business. While Mitch had completely shredded 57, it was a bit more difficult for Tyrone, because he was once again buckling under the pressure of the minute barrier. For the first time in a while, he wasn't even concerned about the world record, he just wanted to get his 57 and be done. Within the following months, Tyrone would get a 58.09, a 58.03, a 58 flat, and numerous other runs that should have been 57. Finally, on October 18th of 2020, Tyrone would get a 57 of his own, but he was still 3 seconds away from Mitch. There are multiple reasons as to why I personally think there will never be another Mario player like Tyrone, but if I were to list the first reason, Reason, I would say that this dude never gave up, even when the odds were stacked against him. Despite Mitch being one of the most cracked speedrunners to ever exist, Tyrone was always right there at the top with him. It was now 2021, and Mitch was still at the top with his 57.54. When Mitch had achieved this world record, his sob was a 57.22. Tyrone's sob was now a 57.09, meaning that he now had 13 more seconds of wiggle room in comparison to when Mitch got his record. Nonetheless, Tyrone still had a 57.57, despite having multiple world record paces that all made it well into endgame. But finally, on January 15th of 2021, Tyrone would once again have his big break. Yes! Mitch and Tyrone would once again have some back and forth action, but this back and forth would once again stop with Mitch getting a world record that would once again stand for months. Except this time, Mitch would put down the game after achieving world record, and while there were players who were within reach of 57, there was only one man who was capable of beating Mitch, and that was Tyrone. 
Summer of 2021 would approach, and not only was Tyrone trying to beat Mitch, but he was playing around with a strategy that could potentially be huge when it came to dethroning Mitch. You see, all the way back in early 2020, a player by the name of Miwi accidentally discovered that you can land on this slither of ground outside of this 2D section in Moon Kingdom. Miwi and others would continue to play around with this concept, and eventually, Miwi had discovered that there were other invisible slithers of ground you could land on, meaning that it could theoretically be possible for players to scale up this entire wall. Well, spoiler alert, Miwi would prove this monstrosity of a trick possible, and the results were a 7 second time save. However, since the level of precision to pull this off was so high, alongside the fact that it was quite literally at the end of the run, no one would try to get consistent, given the sheer difficulty behind it. But on August 19th of 2021, this would happen. Ba 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 Go! Or no 30! So low 30? GG! 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 No, we only lost like 6 seconds in Lake, you know? 6 seconds in fucking Wooded, 4 seconds in Cloud, you know? You know, you lose 8 seconds in fucking Metro, when you lose 9 seconds in fucking Lanchon, you know? It's pretty good. Tyrone had beat his own PB, beat the world record, and got the first world record with the 2D section skip, which was now coined the name 2DSS. But nonetheless, Tyrone very clearly wanted more, not to mention that he had now obtained world records in three other main board categories, meaning that for the first time in Odyssey's history, someone held four out of the six main board category world records, but you know, that's no big deal. If Tyrone wasn't already considered a legend among speedrunners, then what's about to happen next would give people no choice but to respect this man as Tyrone was about to turn Tyrant. Tyrone had now created a 20 plus second gap between himself and second place when it came to any percent. Other runners were starting to get close to Mitch, and you could say that they were starting to get close to Tyrone, but they simply weren't close enough. But before I continue to talk about any percent, I thought I would talk about the other three categories he had managed to get world record in, alongside some of the other world records he had collected along the way. This right here is world peace, and as you can see, this category is about 14 minutes slower than any percent. Well, the thing with world peace is that it's actually very similar to any percent as about half of the kingdoms are essentially identical to the any percent route but the other half are relatively different this difference being that you must fulfill the in-game world peace achievement which usually entails defeating the final boss of a kingdom and slash or completing the baseline story of that kingdom while tyrone's any percent skill would carry over into this category there are lots of things that tyrone would have to learn from scratch for example there's this insanely difficult trick in the sand kingdom called inverted pyramid skip. Normally, players would actually take advantage of what is called a roll cancel clip in which you do a roll followed up by throwing out Cabby to cancel it as a means of bypassing this wall and entering the inverted pyramid early. However, you are able to use this icicle to make it to this part of the pyramid and from there you are able to do this. Tyrone makes it look easy, but the reality is that this trick, among many other parts of the run, are absurdly difficult. So while this category may be a little less popular than any percent, getting a record here is still extremely impressive. Then there is Dark Side, which is once again similar to any percent, but since the run ends upon beating the Dark Side, the run was sizably longer than any percent or World Peace. Not only do you need to collect 250 moons to unlock the Dark Side, but you once again need to pull off hard tricks such as this one. Dark Side itself, in which you do this series of movements to skip having to fight these brutals. The reason as to why these movements are done in such a specific way is simply to avoid triggering the boss fight cutscene, which in turn triggers the boss fight itself. And finally, there is Darker Side, which might just be one of the most rigorous Mario speedruns to ever grace Mario speedrunning. The end goal here is to obviously beat the Darker Side, but this is no small feat as you need 500 moons to unlock the kingdom. I could go on and on about this 
this category, but it essentially combines elements of the two previous categories I mentioned and couples it with any percent alongside a whole bunch of new stuff. Since this is about a 3 hour run, any percent skill can definitely aid you in getting a good time in darker side, but it definitely does not transfer over as easily as it does with the other two categories since there is so much that is different in comparison to any percent. Here's the record history for world peace, here's the record history for dark side, and here's the record history for darker side. Despite 04 dude bopping Tyrone in darker side, Tyrone had shown dominance in all three of these categories, set records that would go and still have gone unbeaten, and above all, he would break minute barriers that weren't even thought to be possible at the time. Not to mention that Tyrone held a countless number of world records in individual levels alongside a buttload of BTT segments. Among all Super Mario Odyssey players alike, only a few are able to say that they've held a world record, but among these world record holders, only a few have transcended themselves to GOAT status. We got Hey There, who absolutely fucks at both 100% and all moons, not to mention all of his other achievements. There's Buster Doggy, who completely dominated the Koopa freerunning scene and is now only achieving crazy times within the main board categories, but some can say that he's even catching up to Tyrone like no other person has, with him bobbing Mitch at one point, meaning that for the first time in years, Tyrone and Mitch weren't the top two. Speaking of which, there's Mitch himself, who despite putting down the any percent grind after his 57 30 had absolutely pushed this game to its limits like no other, giving Tyrone the most fierce competition he could ever ask for. But then, there is Tyrone. He had achieved so much, and at this point, people had no choice but to respect this man's dedication and skill. Tyrone had done so much, but after his 57-13, he had one goal in mind. 56 was close, but at this point in time, it was out of reach, even for Tyrone. It would take months and months of grinding for him to shave off off these last 14 seconds, alongside capitalizing on every single small time save he can. At least that's what everyone thought. Somehow, some way, another trick would be discovered, and conveniently enough, it saved 7 seconds, which would be just enough for 56 to be doable for Tyrone. This is Platform Clip, and unlike the other tricks we've seen, this one is relatively easy. All you needed to do is to grab this ledge, and then let go and cap throw at the right time to get pushed out of bounds. There are some other factors that influence this trick, such as manipulating the camera so that the platform is in the right spot when it comes time to clip, but nonetheless, this trick could very easily be implemented into runs, and something like this is just what Tyrone needed to breach the 56 minute barrier. Tyrone would casually get a 5709 with the addition of platform clip, but even with this new trick, getting a 56 would still be an almost godlike run. <laughs> Throughout this video, we've seen how hard minute barriers have been on Tyrone, but this time he made any percent his bitch, and he was now done with the category, as he had not only achieved an absolutely unheard of time, but he had gotten so good that there was basically zero competition. One month would pass, and no one came close to Tyrone. Two months would pass, and no one came close to Tyrone. Six months would pass, and still no one was close to Tyrone. In fact, all of 2022 would pass, and going into 2023, the 5655 remained on top, and it remained nicely. While it looked like there was no strides being made towards optimizing the world record, there was actually a lot happening behind the scenes. Remember how I mentioned moon clips earlier? Well, there is now two moon clips that could potentially be added into the any percent run, but they weren't just any ordinary moon clips, they were triple jump moon clips. The first moon clip would actually be used as a substitute for late clip. Going for the moon clip here was a no brainer because if you got it, you would save 3 to 4 seconds over a good late clip, but if you failed, you could easily just back it up by doing late clip. The second moon clip was in Wooded Kingdom, and this one also saved 3 to 4 seconds, but missing it can be a bit more punishing as the wasted time from going for the moon clip makes traversing through this section a lot more difficult. Nonetheless, these two tricks accumulated to about 7 seconds of time save, and they both appeared pretty early on in the run. Now I said that there were only two triple jump moon clips, but I actually lied. A while back, it was discovered that you can clip out of bounds here. From there, you can ground pound on the slither of ground that lays out of bounds and make it all the way to this nutmoon. 
moon. While this would save around 6 to 7 seconds in comparison to what is usually done, this trick was deemed to be too difficult. But as players started to grasp a better understanding of triple jump moon clips, they would soon realize that this clip in the maze could also make its way into runs even if it wasn't anywhere near easy. So theoretically, there are now 3 tricks that could be added into the any percent run, and if you combine the amount of time they all save, then we're looking at around 14 seconds of time save. But there was still one more trick up the community sleeve. All the way back in 2020, a player by the name of XDXbox Jaja would accidentally discover this in Snow Kingdom. If this trick could be done on the first try, then it too could save upwards of 7 seconds, but the problem with this ice corner clip was the fact that you were essentially gambling your chances of actually clipping into the wall, which made it not viable for runs. That was until a hard but consistent setup was discovered. The setup starts with a ledge grab, which is then followed up by using the camera to give yourself the exact angle you need to actually jump through the wall. The setup lost a few seconds to doing the trick without the setup, but it still saved around 4 seconds over not doing the trick at all, assuming that you get it on the first try and do it fast. This meant that if someone were to add this trick alongside the other 3 tricks, then they could potentially save 18 seconds over Tyrone. But since no one was capable of beating Tyrone, that meant that there was only one person fit for the job, and that was Tyrone himself. Tyrone was once again bridging the gap between him and the rest of the competition, and while some players were now getting close to 56, he was already at a mid-56 level. But on September 12th of 2023, one of the biggest things to ever grace this game's history would happen. Mitch had come back and he had destroyed Tyrone's world record. The only problem with this is that his recording got corrupted, meaning that this new record would not be able to get verified. It was a monumental moment, yet a tragedy at the same time. It was a plot twist that very few people could have seen coming, yet at the same time, Mitch had been the only person up to this point who was actually able to beat Tyrone.